Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to lesson 53 of Chef's Apprentice, learning to cook like a pro, one small plate at a time. This lesson is the risotto master recipe. Risotto is of course a rice dish, but the ingredients you can add to it are unlimited. After you learn the basic techniques of making this master recipe, you can let your risotto imagination run wild. Techniques today are chopping, seasoning, sweating a mirepoix, making risotto, adjusting seasoning, plating, and garnishing. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about the mise en place for lesson 53, which is the risotto master recipe. The star of this show is rice, but it's not just any rice. It's a certain kind of rice that's used for risotto. And the type I'm gonna be using today is called Arborio. This is the Viva brand, but uh, doesn't have to be that branded. But Arborio rice is a rice for risotto. Also Carnaroli rice. Uh, and there are other risotto rices out there, but either one of these will work. You'll need about a cup of that. Uh, you'll also need to have about three tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to eyeball that. About one third of a cup of finely chopped shallots. About a quarter of a cup of finely chopped celery. Uh, the description calls for about one teaspoon of chopped garlic. I've got more like one tablespoon because in my opinion, you can never have too much garlic. But do whatever you want. If you like a lot of garlic, use more. If you like less, use less. We'll need to have uh, some white wine, probably about, um, oh, about a half a cup. I'm gonna eyeball that too when we get to it. Then we'll need stock, and you're gonna need about a quarter, about a quart of stock. Now, as I've said, we make our own stock in this course. There are bonus lessons on how to make duck stock and lobster stock. It's the same thing to make chicken stock or mushroom stock, same procedure. Now, uh, today, I'm using flavor ingredients that are shrimp, mushroom, and uh, also um, mm, asparagus. Now, the stock that you use in risotto can really be, it can always be chicken stock, or if you don't like, uh, if you're if vegetarian, it can always be vegetable stock. Uh, but but um, if I make a uh, mushroom risotto, I use mushroom stock. If I make a shellfish risotto, I use either lobster stock or shrimp stock, or dashi, and there's also a bonus lesson on making dashi. By the way, to make mushroom stock, save the, save the stems of the mushrooms when you have enough saved up, make the stock. Same thing with shrimp. Save up the shells and the tails when you have enough saved up, make the stock. Okay, so what I'm doing today though, because I'm using asparagus and mushrooms and shrimp, is I have kind of a mixture of uh, lobster stock, chicken stock, and mushroom stock doesn't really matter what the proportions are it's all adding flavor okay and um, then you'll need to have a rind of uh, Reggiano Parmesan Reggiano or Parmesan uh, cheese uh, and you know when you buy a hunk of it uh, there's the end of it that has the uh, the rind on it well keep that for risotto need a piece that's about um, this is about uh, one and a half two inches square and just it's like the end piece of the cheese we're gonna put that into the risotto while it's cooking, and it's gonna add flavor. To some extent, it's gonna melt. It may melt completely, in which case there's nothing to remove at the end. If it doesn't melt completely, we'll remove what's left when we get to the end. We'll need kosher salt, and then we're gonna need pepper. Now, you can either use ground white pepper if you don't want the pepper flecks to show up in the risotto, or you can use black pepper and freshly grind it. I want this flex this time. So I'm going to use the freshly ground black pepper from a pepper mill. You'll need to have about one cup of freshly grated or shredded uh, Parmesan cheese, or Reggiano, Parmigiano, Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, cheese like that, a hard Italian cheese. About one tablespoon of uh, chopped parsley. Now, I've got a lot more than that here. I just had a lot of chopped parsley, so we're just gonna use the amount that we need. All right, um, oh, and by the way, uh, this is just the master recipe on how to make the risotto. You'll also need to have flavoring ingredients, and that can be anything you want. Now, uh, it could be peas, asparagus, it could be shrimp, scallops, it could be lobster, chicken. Uh, today, I am using um, mushrooms and shrimp and asparagus. Making those is not part of the lesson. I'm gonna cook them separately. So whatever flavoring ingredients you decide you wanna use, cook them and season them, have them ready to be stirred in at the end. And um, I think that's all for this, uh, for the ingredients. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the equipment. Okay, we don't need too much equipment to make risotto. 
Of course, you'll need a, a cutting board and a chef's knife to chop up the shallots and the celery and the garlic. You'll also need a saucepan to cook the risotto in. It should be a pretty good size. And a wooden spoon so you can stir the risotto. You'll be doing a lot of stirring. You'll also need a saucepan for the stock. The stock is going to be warm to hot, okay? When, when you start to ladle it into the risotto, you already want to have it warm to hot, somewhere in between. And of course, you'll need a ladle to do that. And then finally, we'll need bowls to plate up, and that's it. So we'll break now, come back, and we'll start cooking the risotto master recipe. Okay, the first thing on our prep list is to heat the stock. And that's happening on the next burner. Now we're going to sweat the, uh, the mirepoix. Uh, although this is an Italian dish, we're gonna use about three um, tablespoons, roughly, of uh, olive oil. And you know, there's probably a lot of Italian cooks who are um, staring at the screen and pulling out their hair right now because I'm calling uh, the, uh, uh, the shallots and the celery a mirepoix. Uh, in Italian, it's a sofrito, okay? So we're, we're gonna sweat the sofrito. We've got about three tablespoons of um, olive oil in there. We're gonna add the shallots, add the celery, And we're gonna sweat those like we've done in many other preparations. Just lightly seasoned with a little salt and a little freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so the sofrito is getting to be um, translucent, so we're going to add the garlic, and we're going to be stirring that quite a bit because uh, garlic can burn quickly and easily. So we're really only going to have to stir that around for about 30 seconds. Okay, now we're going to add the rice right into the sofrito, and we're gonna stir it around, okay? We wanna get every single one of those rice kernels coated with the oil. We're just gonna stir that around for, oh, about 30 seconds. Okay, now we're gonna add the white wine. Now we need about a half a cup, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And it, it can be more than that. And in fact, remember, this is a small plate, right? We're making a, a small amount for six to eight people. That's why we're only using one cup of rice. If you want uh, to make more, just use more rice. And uh, just increase the amount of the sofrito. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stir this until that wine pretty much gets absorbed by the rice. Uh, the type of rice that's used for, um, uh, for risotto, the um, arborio or carnaroli or some other rices, they absorb a lot of liquid, okay? And that's what makes risotto so lusciously rich. It's not cream or butter so much, although some cooks do use that. It's really more that the rice absorbs so much liquid. Okay. The um, wine has been absorbed. Now we're gonna start to add stock. And we're gonna start by adding just enough stock to cover the rice And we're also gonna add that rind of the uh, Parmesan cheese, okay? And then we're gonna stir, and we gotta keep stirring. Make sure you stir in the corners, too, so that um, nothing burns in the corners. And we're gonna stir this on uh, medium heat. I've got the heat up just a little higher than I want. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium. Even slightly lower than medium is good. 
and we're going to stir until this liquid has been absorbed. So that first um, stock has almost been absorbed and I like to wait until after that first absorption to uh, season the rice itself. So we're just going to give it some light uh, salt and some pepper and then we're going to add more stock. and we're going to stir it. Now, some cooks will add their flavor ingredients, flavoring ingredients while they are cooking the rice. Uh, so for example, now they might put in some shrimp, they might put in some asparagus. Um, I don't do that. I put in all my flavoring ingredients at the end and it's especially important not to put in flavoring ingredients that are mushrooms now because if you do that the mushrooms will turn the whole thing gray, okay? So, um, I put my flavoring ingredients in at the end. I have them all cooked. They'll go in uh, as a last step. So we're just gonna keep stirring this till this stock is absorbed. So while we're stirring, uh, why don't I show you uh, the flavoring ingredients that I'm going to be using. I have here uh, some asparagus and some shrimp and some mushrooms. Now they've already been cooked and seasoned. Uh, if anything, you want them to be they, they either to be fully cooked or slightly undercooked because you're going to stir them into the risotto at the last minute and um, uh, they're really not going to get much cooking time in there. Okay, It'll, it, you'll, you'll be warming them up if they're. And you should be keeping them warm, but you should be you'll be warming them up when you put them in there. Uh, you might notice that I separate separated out the. Um, asparagus tips. I'm going to use those to uh, garnish the tops of each one of the little risotto servings. And I'll also say something about serving. Okay, uh, In a prior lesson, just recently, we used a, um, a ring mold. Now, when you finish your risotto, you can either make it kind of dry or you can make it kind of soupy. Depends on how much stock you add in at the end. I like mine kind of soupy. But if you do it kind of dry, you could actually put some of the um, uh, risotto into the ring mold on a plate, pull off the mold, and serve it to your guests as a little perfectly round uh, mound or cylinder of, um, of risotto. Uh, you could also use a, um, a ramekin, okay? Just put some in the ramekin, and you could even then put that back into the oven for a couple minutes just to warm it up if it needs it. Uh, I'm going to be using these little um, Staub, uh, I'd say they're kind of like gratin dishes, which will make a nice presentation, I think. Also, uh, you know, uh, this is being presented as a small plate. You could serve this as uh, dinner for two. Uh, one cup is enough uh, for dinner for two, in which case you would just serve it in larger bowls. And again, if you want uh, to make more um, for so, so, so we have enough for two people if we were going to serve this as a main course. If you want it four, just double the recipe. Okay, so this stock is almost absorbed. We're going to add more. What happens if you run out of stock before the rice is done? Use water. Okay. Now you're just going to keep adding stock and keep stirring until the rice is al dente. Al dente means to the tooth. It means just slightly, it has a slight bite to it. It's not yet soft. It's not yet mushy. Okay. And I like to um, uh, catch it right before it's al dente. Now that is something that takes a lot of experience because you um, are, you're going to be tasting the rice, you're going to be sampling it, you're going to be, you're going to be thinking, well, this is still kind of hard. This is still kind of uncooked. But eventually you'll be able to discern the difference between um, uncooked and almost cooked, okay? Now as you can see as I've been stirring this um, stock has been getting absorbed. Now if you stir real fast it's going to take a lot longer to do. I try to stir kind of slowly so that the um, uh, rice has a chance to heat up. As you, If you stir it it actually cools down, right? So if you give it a chance to heat uh, it will absorb the liquid faster and uh, but you don't want it to heat too fast otherwise it will burn right so you want to find just the right pace to be stirring 
and keeping it from burning and allowing the liquid to get absorbed. Okay, we're gonna add some more stock. And let's see how we're doing uh, on our doneness. Now these kernels are still, they're not hard, okay? Hard would be uncooked. They're a little chewy. Uh, that means that they are almost, almost to the al dente stage, okay? So what we're gonna do at this point is remove the rind. We can find it if it hasn't dissolved. Sometimes they'll just dissolve, which is just adding flavor to your risotto. There we go, there she is, all right. And I'll try to get some of oh, <laughs> try to get some of the rice off of it so we don't lose rice. Okay, good. Keep stirring. Now I want to stir in the cheese. That's obviously going to make it drier, thicker. Okay. I want my risotto to be a little soupy, so I'm going to add some more stock. If you prefer it to be a little drier, you just have to judge. Don't use too much stock. It's going, to it's going to continue to absorb some of what I just put in there, too. All right, now we want to taste it for seasoning. I don't think it needs any additional salt. I am going to add just a little bit more pepper, more for appearance than for taste. Now, I'm going to add the flavoring ingredients. I'm keeping those, those asparagus tips to the side. Stir them in. Make sure it doesn't burn in the corners. Now I'm going to add some more stock because I want it to be soupier. Now this whole process will take probably about roughly 15 minutes, but it depends on your heat, depends on how much you stir. Okay, so there we have it. We are now ready to plate. Turn off the heat. Okay, we're going to um, plate up by putting some of this risotto into these small cocottes. It's pretty well mixed, so I don't think we have to worry about getting a good distribution of the goodies, but you know, that's always something you wanna make sure of. You wanna make sure each guest gets a pretty good distribution of the goodies that are in the um, dish. Now, uh, I'm, on, I'm plating up four at the moment. There is enough here for six, possibly eight. And you wouldn't think that if it's only it's only one cup of um, rice, but it uh, risotto actually is kind of deceiving. One cup kind of goes a long way. All right, then I'm going to use a little bit of uh, chopped sun-dried tomato. This was not part of the um, ingredients because this is my flavoring ingredients. Remember, you can decide whatever you want as your flavoring ingredients and as your garnish. Then we're gonna garnish with one of those asparagus tips on each one. Then we're gonna do a little twist of pepper, just a little bit. Again, this is more for presentation than it is for taste. I use a coarse grind too, by the way. And then uh, just a little bit of parsley. We're gonna garnish that from on high. Remember on high gives you a nice distribution, usually 12 to 18 inches above the dish. Okay. Now, if you wanted, you could also put a little sprinkling of salt on here at the end, but I'm not gonna do that because I think that the um, seasoning was just right. So that's it. That's the conclusion of the risotto master recipe. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Next up is the roasted butternut squash soup with mirin caramelized mushrooms. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.